We're going to riff off of that. Um, so I'm Phil Chaitis. I'm the creative director for Barrel Roll Creative. Uh, I'm Jaime Perez. I'm the technical director for Barrel Roll Creative. And uh, yeah, our conversation is going to be... That's Chris. Right. That's Chris. Uh, he is our uh, art director. Uh, he's out of uh, San Antonio. He's our third partner. But he can't make it today, so we use that picture. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to talk about is basically how we started the company. Um, it's a creative company. We do web development. We do mobile application design, uh, branding, identity design, print material, uh, you name it. As far as design goes, we can do it. Uh, also do uh, research, uh, research and development for, uh, say, like, a, I guess, uh, have a, a web application idea or a mobile app idea. We could produce a kind of R&D work for you. Yeah, and uh, we just want to talk about, like I said, uh, the ideas on why we started it, um, some of the challenges we faced. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the projects we worked on, uh, and maybe some vision for the future. Yes, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so uh, we did uh, start in uh, 2012. Uh, it, I, uh, we, I guess, officially started in April of 2012. We formed the company. Uh, uh, the three of us were actually working full-time jobs. Uh, at that time, and we left those jobs six months after that and started working for Barrel Roll Creative full time. I was a web developer for a uh, for a legal aid organization. Yeah, I was a web designer for uh, MPC Studios here in the, in the Valley. They've done quite a bit of work. Uh, and I think, uh, well, Chris was also working for another web design company here locally. Uh, and I think the we all kind of had the mentality that we wanted to do something different. Um, we kind of had that entrepreneurial bug, I think, within all of us. And honestly, over a couple of drinks and meeting for a beer or two, uh, we decided to take the leap and start our own company. Um, it was exciting. It was scary, but uh, we were all about it. These are some of the clients we've worked with since the beginning. Um, you want to? Okay. Uh, so uh, we we've started. Uh, Last year, we worked with uh, Rackspace, which is uh, the open cloud company. They're based out of San Antonio, Texas, uh, but they are a global company. They have uh, offices, and uh, they're headquartered out of San Antonio, but they have offices pretty much all over the world. Uh, we built for them a uh, customer uh, relations uh, portal, a uh, content management system that allows uh, Rackspace, a uh, certain Rackspace department, to tell a story for a specific customer of theirs. And it's uh, similar to a, a blog for uh, uh, their customer relation. Uh, for ACT Now, uh, it is voting season. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen the ACT uh, uh, voting uh, material around around town. Uh, we've, uh, we've done some graphic work for them and built a voter lookup application for them where you can look up your voter information uh, by typing in your uh, either voter ID uh, or your name and some personal information about yourself. Yeah, and that was one of the first clients we ever worked with, and we're still working with them today. So it's kind of nice to be working with clients um, for a while. Uh, Magic Valley is the uh, electric company here in South Texas. Um, they, again, one of the first clients that we started working with. And we did their uh, website redesign and kind of redid their online presence um, in a big way, their original site. Uh, was dated to say the least, and uh, we kind of try to bring them to the to the present, to the modern. Right, um, they're a great client. Uh, Cell One, uh, we built a uh, a mobile application for them. Really, it's a I, I guess like a presentation layer for uh, for their their customers, uh, so their customers can log in. Cellular One, uh, I guess, by the way, is a uh, like a cell service company, so much of Verizon, T-Mobile, uh, but for rural rural regions in uh, in the United States. I think they're based out of Texas, Louisiana, Pennsylvania, and sometimes Montana. Right. Uh, and we built a uh, front-facing web uh, mobile app for them uh, based on some technology that they had built in-house. Uh, see, Trueability uh, is a tech startup out of San Antonio. Um, they actually, they're an interesting company. They basically connect tech talent um, to hiring tech companies. So um, users, uh, individuals can go on there and take a, a, a right an assessment test, get a score, and based on those scores, um, companies can read those scores and hire whoever they think is the best fit. 
Um, we did their uh, branding, their logo, as well as their website design, and uh, some early kind of product exploration. And that last one, yeah, McAllen International Airport is one of our most recent clients. Uh, we have redone their logo and branding, and so we're very excited about that one. That one's launching soon. Okay, so uh, just to run through a few of the things we, we just talked about, this is the uh, Rackspace. Uh, it's called Rack Stories, the customer portal. Uh, so they, they have a, a, a hero unit uh, video uh, that runs or just a large image uh, to tell a quick story about, uh, about the company. And uh, it lists the, the services, uh, Rack Stories services, uh, Rackspace's services that the, the customer uses. You want to talk about Geekdom? I, I think it's important to talk about how we acquired these clients. I know a lot of people always ask us, how did you get these clients? How did you get these clients? Um, I think a lot of it has always stemmed from our network, um, people we've worked with in the past, uh, people we've kind of maintained as clients or even just connections or as friends. Um, and they've kind of helped us you know, uh, acquire this work. Uh, Rackspace was a great example. Uh, yeah, and TrueAbility as well. Uh, Chris uh, works at... Um, Geekdom, which is a basically a collaborative co-working co um, space uh, in out of San Antonio, uh, we kind of lucked out there because he uh, basically grabbed the desk there and started mingling with a lot of uh, interesting people, people who need to work, and uh, that's and some one of our couple of our biggest clients came from just him being there. Uh, so I think that's important to to note. Uh, so Magic Valley is another client, like we said, this is their new web presence. Um, and uh, yeah, we again, we kind of just went with a really uh, customer-facing site, uh, something that really made it easy to pay your bill, um, find you know uh, Magic Valley uh, area coverage, things like that. Uh, they were very happy about that. True ability. That's uh, early early work we did for uh, True Ability. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, another part of. Beyond work, right, yeah, running a company, right, is, is just, it's more than doing the design. It's more than doing the development. It's uh, managing the business. Um, that can go from everything from bookkeeping to paying your taxes to managing your time. Um, it's, it's been an adventure, right? Uh, yeah. uh, we really didn't know what we were doing when we, when we jumped into this. Yeah, we'll be honest with you. We didn't really know what we were doing. Uh, we, we had a lot of days like that, uh, but... Uh, 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 we did talk to the folks here at the UTPA uh, Business Development and Innovation Group. Uh, they did help us out, uh, specifically Colin Kane. He did uh, kind of guide us along in how to just set yourself up uh, for uh, for a business to to run and manage a business. Yeah, and I think that was something we were really conscious about early on when we first started meeting about running a company. We wanted to know how do you really start it? How, what's the proper way to do it? Um, we did our best to plan, and we just kind of learned as we went, um, yeah. whether it was online applications that we started utilizing uh, to manage our books, to track time, to send invoices, all of those things were things we just learned on the fly and just did our best with. Um, and I think it's something important to note also is um, we changed as we went. We adapted. Um, you know, we started off with one application to, let's say, send invoices and track uh, money coming in, and we've switched it since then. Um, we like reviewing those things and kind of adapting as we go. And I think that's an um, important part of the, that process of running, running your own company is kind of keeping track of those things and how well they're working or not. So, okay, we're going to run into, we ran into some challenges, obviously. And we've got, we've got three important ones that we've reflected on that are important challenges to share with you. Right. Uh, the first one, uh, which was a great uh, challenge to have, was too much work. The first, yeah, the first year, uh, which was, I guess, our first full year was last year, 2013, uh, we had uh, quite a lot of work uh, to handle. And through this, uh, I guess through this event or through this challenge, we learned how to hire people, how to, uh, you know, contract, you know, certain work out uh, that needed, that needed uh, contracting out, uh, how to, uh, I guess, in a, a minute scale, manage our time, manage how we, you know, approach a project, deliver a project and, uh, and, and, and get, a, get a new project. Yeah, I mean, and hiring people meant unemployment tax. So yet another taxes that we had to kind of figure out and manage. And again, we kind of just learned as we went and did our best with it and yeah, it's been working out. Um, so next is uh, another challenge that we've uh, come across recently is inconsistency. First year we had a, a ton of work. Uh, second year it was, uh, an, I guess, less work, but uh, 
smaller scale projects and we had to adapt to the smaller scale projects and the number of them and a lot of them came or kind of stemmed from uh, uh, clients that we worked with the previous year and just uh, did like either update with uh, updates for them or uh, just a project maintenance or building a new portion of a larger scale, uh, a larger scale uh, application. Yeah, so I think the problem there was really, you know, um, how, how do we continue to generate more clients, um, you know, if, if the, the client kind of intake is maybe lower uh, than it was the previous year. Uh, so that's a challenge we've been, you know, working through for a while now. And I think every company goes through those things, and we've been doing that ourselves. Um, the last one is... Um, you could call it, you know, project creep, um, where basically you have a, a set schedule, let's say, for um, a project, and a client uh, go, kind of goes past that end deadline, um, or even during the project is asking for more and more things. Um, how do you manage that? It has been a, has been a fun challenge, you know. Um, and it's part of the or the per process, uh, the learning process, and developing the process as as we go. Right. Uh, and the final. Final slide uh, we have is, is the future, uh, what the future holds for us. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> and I think that's part, and that's part of it. You know, I think we started this company not knowing how it was going to go, not knowing if it was going to be uh, difficult or easy or success. Um, we like the idea of not knowing and adapting. You know, we, we, we don't like looking five years ahead. We like looking, you know. Six, six months ahead. Right, right. Now, planning for the future, of course, is good, but being able to adapt on the fly I think is very important, and that's something we've we've stuck with yeah. ever since we started. Was kind of just you know staying on your feet and um, yeah, think of the problem, find a solution, and uh, refine your process. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. And it's worked. Yeah, it's worked for us. So, and, uh, any questions? Sure. Uh, using those websites, what technology are you guys using? Rails, PHP, or what kind of technology? We use both. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, uh, working with working with multiple clients, it all depended. Uh, sometimes the they started the project, and we did say just the front end development for it. Like uh, True Ability, there they were a Ruby on Rails application, and uh, we did the design work for them and the front facing, just their their marketing side. Uh, the uh, the Magic Valley, it's uh, uh, custom CMS. Uh, we built off of uh, Expression Engine, so it's a PHP te technology. Uh, in there was also WordPress and uh, the the Cell One application it was a phone gap application. So a lot of it is is in and around HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Yeah, I mean, Hymas I feel like implemented everything under the sun. And being like just the design side of things, things that he does is very. All yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I try to. <laughs> it, it, it's a, it's a lot of googling and it's a lot of, uh, a lot of learning figuring out. Yeah, learning, learning as you go uh, when you. When you get a certain type of project, you just kind of, you just kind of wing it, and then you eventually figure it out. If you have not, then you then you start to look for outside help if you if you need it. And when and when you build the the website, so you give let's say the code to the client, so you don't you you no longer own that code, so you like pass all the rights to that. Code. Yeah, we do we do yeah we do that. They 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 pay for the code. Uh, they pay for the design. They pay for the code, and it's theirs. Sometimes it will be hosted on our servers. Uh, sometimes we'll give them the code and they'll they'll host it as 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 they seek it. I think some companies do say like, oh well, we own the code, we've locked it down. You're you know, and if you want it from us, you have to buy it from us after the fact. And we've never been a fan of that. We like the idea of you're hiring us to produce this. This is yours. It's pretty simple. Yeah, and that's why I guess. Uh, sorry, that goes to some of the process that we've talked about is yeah. expanding our contract. The contract we, we we've written a ton of different contracts. Yeah, we provide that thing constantly. Which outlines all the details of like stuff like that. So, yes. You mentioned that you had a steady job before going into this. Yeah. What prompted you into venturing on your own and yeah. risking everything? And what actually went through your mind before doing this? I know for me, it, I, I feel like I've always had that. Again, that entrepreneurial bug, I feel like I, I could always do it myself. I always feel like no matter what was in front of me, I could do it myself or maybe even diff just differently. I just have always had a different specific way of doing things, especially when it comes to design. And I think working for multiple companies doing design work, I always saw that, man, I, I, we could do that better or we could do that differently or like I could, I could have more fun doing this and produce better work. 
Um, and I think the ingredients being my partners and the people that I, I kind of got in contact with, um, both Jaime and Chris, seeing that opportunity, I couldn't pass it up. I couldn't see these guys who had the capabilities that they had, um, their expertise, Jaime being you know development background, Chris being creative background. I, cu I couldn't pass that up, that, that opportunity. Um, I couldn't just I couldn't just do it. I, I wanted to really jump ship and give it a go with these guys. And uh, yeah. I just I, wanted beer in the office. <laughs> that was, uh, <laughs> be able to play ping pong every day is fun too. I'm wondering what kind of contacts down here in the valley are people like you finding most useful for increasing your company, what you're doing? What kind of contacts are down here, and what kind do you need? Uh, uh, well, it's uh, I guess I guess we do have a uh, do have competitors, uh, and those competitors do become contacts. We have uh, uh, we have kind of uh, I guess past work along between our competitors because that's the kind of network uh, uh, that's become. And quite honestly, we have moved outside of the valley in order to find more more contacts. Uh, sometimes they, they, they... Well, are you advertising yourself? For example, all these groups around here. Uh, who need to develop websites and all and kind of doing it on their own and don't know about guys like you. Uh, where's the interface that uh, you connect with all these disparate groups? It's a great question. and it, Right, if we knew that, you know, I think maybe we'd be... I guess it, like like this groups like this. Yeah. Uh, st uh, this is our first time here. This is our first time doing a. Uh, mm -hmm. From the, our previous work, it's our previous work that has spoken for us. Ever since I started being a designer ten years ago, it's always the work that I've done in the past that has got me work in the future. Yeah, it, and it's really yeah. I mean, we've we've talked about it before. Advertising, you know, do we put a print ad in a magazine? Do we put a billboard up or something like? That? We did Google Ads for one month. And, uh, yeah. and didn't produce. Well, I saw your uh, McAllen Airport logo last night at the commission. Oh, you're there. Okay, great. And uh, they are thinking they're going to revise it. Did you know that? Yeah, I, I was there. I got the the feedback. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, what? What? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. You are. Am I involved in the revisions? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, the McAllen Airport team has been, yeah, we've been working with the McAllen Airport team. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, in the, it's not finalized yet, so. You guys got a sneak peek. Well, because I didn't get any sense of who was doing it. That's right, yeah, it was kind of a, and that's, and that's a weird process as well, working with teams that then present to another team to make the decision and then come back to us. That's an interesting process. That's, oh, yeah, yeah, I know Liz well, yeah. Um, what were you guys' backgrounds? Because I know you, know you do development, you do creative. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Because I know as an engineer, as a former engineer, I have a similar background. I know web development. But it's not like I was taught in school web development. Right. Were you guys taught in schools, any of this? Or is it off the cuff? Uh, okay. Uh, I was not taught in school. I, I started uh, at UT Engineering. Uh, but I but I dropped out pretty pretty soon after that. Uh, I came to Pan Am for a while and uh, took a few different courses and a few different majors. And uh, I got into web development. I landed a job updating someone's uh, company's website, and I just kind of I just kind of kept doing that. That was 12 years ago. Uh, and the I guess the way I've learned it, my background is just from the from the web itself. Uh, I learned the web from the web. And, uh, I was going to say the same thing. I, I've learned mostly on my own. I mean, I took, I have a degree from Pan Am um, with a specialization in graphic design. There were some classes here that I learned a few things, but majority of the things that I learned was either on my own while I was going to school or by working with clients, by working with the clients and just learning as you go and reading like, okay, that was not working at all and I completely blew that. What should I do differently in, in the future? Um, but yeah, I worked with... Um, Multiple, I did have plenty of design jobs early on, working a picture classified early on, and I would do freelance stuff as well, and then working for bigger web design companies as well, uh, moving forward right before I did this, so, yeah. So question for you. Uh, so you talked about, uh, of course, you haven't been around that long since 2012, mm -hmm. and then that first year you had uh, a bunch of work 
Uh, so have you bought, have you contracted and hired additional people for your company, or have you subcontracted everything out, or, or, or what's the? We did both. Uh, yeah, we we did uh, subcontract out some work uh, for you know an extra site we had to we had to do, uh, and we also had uh, we had an intern uh, we had two interns uh, just kind of stayed on as uh, as uh, early employees after you know after their summer uh, summers that was uh, that was the last summer but then uh, but then uh, but then they moved on. Yeah. So now it's, it's 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 back to the the three of us. Right, and I think that you know some of that it was in you know that decision to. Well, I think we liked the idea of coming back to just the three of us, uh, and that was right around the time where we were super busy and we wanted to scale back a little bit and concentrate on bigger clients for longer periods of time, as opposed to just kind of turning out the door, which is something that early on we didn't want to do. That was kind of we went into the company not wanting to just churn out things. We wanted to really spend our time on it, and so we liked the idea of kind of scaling back a little bit. So. Yeah. Any? How, how many jobs have you turned down? From cl as barrel roll, like clients coming in? Yeah, a few. Yeah. There were there weren't big jobs like oh no. It was more like uh, hey our, our website's down. Uh, can you fix it real quick? Type yeah. of thing, uh, stuff like that. Or I have this. I needed to. I have this. Uh, I guess image or something on my website. I need to be slightly different. It would turn down work. Yeah, there, and, and then I think that came from, again, the experience that Chris and all of us had, especially, I guess, design-wise, people coming to you with just little work that just would be not worth it. Um, we learned early on that we wanted to not say yes to everything. Uh, yeah, we, we, we think of, of web development and building these uh, websites and web apps as, as a craft, uh, so to speak. So we try to do everything from the ground up. Right. A lot of you know, custom work. We don't like. We have been said no to a lot, though. So. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So you guys open to interns. Leila Hernandez has got a graphic design student who wants to come work for you. Uh, you interested? Um, uh, sure. We'd be open to that. <laughs> yeah, we. I like Leila. She's great. Um, yeah, I've, I've talked to a couple of students who used to be under her as well. So yeah, yeah. Sure. <clears throat> have you guys ever done anything for equity in a company? No. We've been offered that. Yeah, we have been offered that, but we 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 like we like money. We like money. <laughs> what would be some of the like guidelines that you would go by if you did want to accept something on an equity basis? I'm not sure if we would want to. I don't know if we would do it. Quite honestly, yeah. uh, it, it would. I don't know. We've turned that down. We've I, I guess uh, uh, going back to this question, we have turned down offers of, of equity. Right. Uh, and it's like, for me, it's like, you know, a promise of money later just doesn't quite make sense. Um, you know, the idea can be great, but... Uh, Our bills are now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was actually going to call, like, is that, is that just the only reason that you just, you just need to cash now? Uh, yeah. If they were, I mean, if they were to be able to maybe have a combination of some cash now and then also eventually equity. Would that be accepted? Is that the only reason why you turned that down, or is there some other like? That has been the only reason we've turned it down. It, you, it, it has been most uh, the majority equity and some, uh, I guess some some cash. But uh, uh, but uh, yeah, the majority of the time it's been more equity than than uh, than actual funding. You know, for us to actually build build the project up. Uh, yeah, you guys have mentioned um, Project Creep, yeah. where where the where the you know the the, the specs or what the client's asking for just kind of increases over time. Yeah. If you've already agreed upon a budget, how do you deal with that in the middle of the project? Yeah, there's different things we've tried. I know um, something we tried early on was just simply charging. Uh, like, okay, this is out of project, uh, out of the contract because of this. Uh, we're going to charge hourly for all that extra stuff. Another thing that I like doing, or we've tried doing anyway, is um, saying like, "Hey, like, let's take that extra idea that isn't in the in the contract, and let's leave it for later. Let's take, you know, the idea's been, um, as we like to call it, and we'll do it after the fact, and then we'll figure out a different contract or just charge hourly, something like that." And that's work. Yeah, I think people get get that. Um, they understand like it's just it's not in what we agreed upon. That makes sense to me. We charge, you know, on top of that in order to account for that. Yeah, a good example of that was a website we did last year was 
just it was like a regular HTML uh, static website, and then after a while they asked for, you know, can we make this uh, content management system? Uh, well, can you just tack that on? I was like, well, no, we can't, uh, and we had to add that on later uh, after the project was completed. So I really liked the McAllen uh, Airport website or the logo. Did they had a problem with that? <laughs> no. It's, there's a few changes, but it's going to be basically almost that. And you are doing the changes? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, sir? Uh, a uh, hundred, a hundred an hour. One yeah. hundred or five hundred? One hundred. Yeah. So you, both of you guys are in the valley, and, and you have the person in San Antonio. Uh, were were three of you guys in the valley at first, and then Chris left, or did you all start in San Antonio and you guys came down? Bottom line is, yeah. we started. Why are you guys still here? And how do we keep you guys here, just in case you land some crazy project and you decide it's better for us to leave, or, or what's angering you, and how do we keep pushing that idea against? Okay, well, first part of the question, uh, we did we did start in the valley. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris, we or the discussion part. was began in the valley, and then uh, Chris moved to San Antonio. His uh, his then fiance, now wife, uh, got a got a job, a lucrative job in, in San Antonio, and she and they moved up there together. Yeah. Uh, it was an easy. I mean, we. I remember him wondering, like, oh, is this still going to happen since I'm moving? And it was an easy answer for us, like, yeah. The the web, you know, we work we remotely. work remotely. Uh, Half the time I'm working at home. Uh, we do have an office, uh, but I'll, I'll work from home and uh, Phil will work from home. Or a coffee shop if I'm in the mood. Like, doesn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter. And that's the you know, second part of the question is like, I'm a, I'm a big fan of working remotely. If if you can make it work from working with somebody in Japan online and it's and it's successful, I say go for it. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah uh, we've yet to feel the the need to 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 leave. Yeah, physically anyway. Yeah. 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 We need to take a trip to, you know, Austin or Houston or something, we'll do that, or, you know, anywhere else, we'll just uh, do a Google Hangout. Uh, so there hasn't been, hasn't been the big urge to, to leave the valley. I got a mortgage, so I want to, it's really hard to sell a house. Yeah. Do you guys plan to grow, like, uh, get an office, like, for all y'all together, or get something a little bit more like a, like a actual business for a place? Uh, it's a good question. We've, we, we have an office. Yeah, it's an it's an. Be like a LLC or we are LLC. We're an LLC. Um, we're an LLC. I mean, we're we're a company in all senses of the word, but just you know, it, I, I like the idea of keeping it small. We've talked about this before. We like the idea of not becoming this huge hundred employee company. If we can be successful and rich it, on on a three man team, <laughs> I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah. Right, more comfortable. There was, yeah. You talk about how one of your partners in San Antonio, two of you are here. Can you explain, has there been any advantage? Well, I'm sure there's a lot of advantages to that, but why are some of the disadvantages of having your partners kind of split in a way uh, when it comes to the actual business? Well, Chris I, I, isn't here for this talk, so that's, that's yeah. one of them. Uh, I, 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 yeah. uh, internally? And, and that's why we try to get up there to San Antonio every once in a while, just to have a in-person time, you know, just have fun. But is it more but social, or is it? Yeah, so business-wise. Yeah, business-wise, there is there there might be like a you know a slight disconnect, but we're always using we're always on chat. We always kind of work around the same hours. Uh, we for a, a good majority of the time we have uh, an open connection set up on uh, like a couple of iPads. Uh, uh, kind of a new service called Perch. Instead of an iPad, and it's like a, it's always it's, on portal. Right, yeah, Chris's face is on the screen. Yeah. And so you just uh, turn uh, the the microphone is off until it like recognizes your face. You close to it, it'll turn on, and then you can talk. Like, hey, Chris. Yeah. And then just have that have that have that connection. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wanted them on like a Roomba or like a right, right, right. something moving. Yeah. So, and again, back to the you know the applications that are out there to to promote remote working. You know, so you're not you can connect, yeah. yeah to stay connected. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it it is like it is a little like when Chris isn't there and uh, or, or neither of us are, are there and Chris needs to get a hold of us. Uh, we might be we might miss each other by a few minutes, but you know if it's a few minutes, text them or something. Yeah. 
Sure. I have quite the opposite question on the uh, actually having an office space. Is your main reason for having an office space for clients to come by and kind of looking uh, maybe more established? Because why would you actually need to pay rent for an office when you're able to do this from home? I mean, that, I feel like that's just something that you could cut out and really... Yeah, we've had that. We've had this conversation. Yeah, one of the first reasons uh, we did uh, get the office was uh, to bring clients in. Uh, but quite honestly, I don't know. A small majority of our clients come to come to. Our you office. mostly go over to the, your clients' yeah. businesses yeah. anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. If, 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 if not that, we do. We run uh, we run it over uh, run it over the phone or something or uh, yeah. Google Hangout. Yeah. For me, the uh, I mean, one of the reasons why we got the office one another reason for me was like I, I didn't want to do it just at home um, I like the idea of being in office you know sometimes does that have like a productiveness um, yeah, for like sure. you're like in the office oh I gotta work now where you're at home and you're like your dog walks by you're like you know it's I've learned that it, it varies um, I've learned that a couple months man the office is where I get I get stuff done and then it's like you know what I like the idea of changing the environment for a month and I'll so I'll work at home or I'll work at a combination of coffee shops and then like oh I need to go into the office for something or other it breaks it up a little bit it is nice to have the the, the, the variety yeah. uh, and uh, you know the good thing about the valley is it's not super expensive for yeah How long did you all three knew each other before uh, going into this venture? Uh, I met Chris a few years ago at a random party. I don't remember why. Uh, I met Chris. He actually worked at um, a previous job of mine as a designer, like a generation after me. So there was a designer after me and then Chris, and they called me in to come help with something that they are missing a file or something from way back when. I met Chris there, and I saw his work, and I was like, that guy's good stuff, so I'm going to keep him around. And that was only two or two years ago. Yeah. Three, 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 three years, years ago. Started. Okay, four years ago. Four years ago. Right, right. Four years uh, ago. I met Phil from a, a mutual friend. Uh, right. uh, I knew he did web designer. I'd, I'd heard he'd done, had done web design just from, I guess, a network of people I, we knew and, and contacted him about the, this project that uh, somebody asked me to, to help out on. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks.